Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Samantha and today is Spooky Story Saturday. I do my makeup and I tell creepy stories. If you think that this is your thing, please hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button and all the products that I'll be using will be listed in the description box below. Warning on today's story, there is mentions of abuse and talk of suicide. Today we are venturing out to Hollywood, California to the Hollywood sign. Okay, so we're not really venturing out. I wish we were, but I have seen the sign from up in a plane. Hollywood was incorporated in 1903 and became part of Los Angeles County in 1910. Gary Chandler was a real estate developer and he and his partners put in $21,000, which is approximately $250,000 today to build the Hollywood sign. So it was made of 45 foot high block letters and it originally said Hollywood Land, not Hollywood, because Hollywood Land was the subdivision that Harry Chandler was building. The sign was anchored into the ground by telephone poles and it was illuminated by approximately 4,400 light bulbs. So it used to actually light up in sections and it would say Holly would land. The sign itself was completed in 1923. So basically at this point in Los Angeles's history, um, the movie industry was really starting to take off. Um, their prime um, their prime industry was at the time real estate. Um, as people were flocking to the areas as they wanted to be in films. Or to work in the film industry. So one thing that I didn't really know was that the sign was actually only supposed to be in place for about a year. And I mean, it's been almost a hundred years at this point. So obviously they didn't take it down. However, during the Great Depression, um, regular maintenance on the sign was cancelled and the housing development actually went out of business at this time. The city of Los Angeles took over the possession of the sign in the mid-1940s. The Los Angeles Recreation and Parks Commission actually wanted to tear the sign down. At this point it was sort of an eyesore as maintenance, like I said, had been cancelled on it. But the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce actually stepped in and took over for the sign. And in 1949, they removed the word land and they fixed up the rest of it. So in 1978, Playboy founder and CEO Hugh Hefner held a benefit gala at his mansion in Homely Hills in order to raise money to fix the sign. They raised enough money that night to actually replace the sign. And then in the early 2000s, um, they actually reached out to Hugh Hefner again as the sign needed many more repairs and they needed like an additional $900,000 in order to like save the sign and he gave the last $900,000. So public access to the sign is prohibited there are fences, motion sensors, microphones, cameras, um, security to keep people away from the sign, to keep it from getting damaged. And the land around the sign is actually um, protected park area so that they can not put houses up near the sign. Um, I guess that was a big deal many years ago um, somebody wanted to build a house for himself and his superstar girlfriend and people weren't having it so they were able to get the land around it as protected parkland so the land surrounding the sign is protected park area there are trails around it that you can hike and a piece of the original sign can be found in the Hollywood Museum. And that's the story of the Hollywood sign. Just kidding. We're not done yet. Millicent N. Twistle was born in Wales and moved to New York City with her father when she was a very young child. Her dad worked on Broadway and from a very young age she decided that she also wanted to be 
an actor. She decided to rename herself Peg from the play Peg Oh My Heart. At 14, her father passed away after getting hit um, in a hit and run. And this was two years after her stepmother had passed away. So her mom was either in Wales or she had passed away at this point. It's really unclear and it's really hard to find which one is true. There's many differing stories. But either way, her and her younger brothers, they were sent to live with her uncle in Los Angeles and his name was Charles and this was in 1922. So as she got older Peg actually studied acting and she wanted to be a Broadway actress either in Boston or in New York. By 1925 Peg was 17 and she had already been in many plays. And in 1926, she got an invitation to join the New York Theatre Guild, which my understanding is it was quite prestigious. She began doing plays in New York, and that is where she met the man that she would soon marry. Peg married fellow actor Robert Lee Heath, and this was in 1927. But unfortunately, the marriage was incredibly unstable as Keith was said to have abused Peg and he had issues with alcoholism. So they had the marriage annulled, but her personal and professional life both suffered because of this. Peg moved back to her uncle's house in 1932, which was during the Great Depression. And at this point, she decided to go into movies. She was signed to RKO Studios and signed on for the film 13 Women. Unfortunately, most of Peg's scenes ended up getting cut due to the censors. And then shortly thereafter, Peg found out that her contract with RKO was not being renewed. On September 16th, 1932, Peg told her uncle that she was going to be going to meet some friends, um, when in reality she decided to go toward the Hollywood sign. Some stories have said that she was intoxicated, others have said she wasn't, I'm not sure myself. When she got to the sign, she took off her jacket, folded it, and placed it on the ground, and then she placed her purse beside it. She then climbed the 50-foot ladder up the uh, letter H. She then jumped to her death. Two days later, a woman was hiking on the trail and she came across a woman's jacket and purse and she looked a little further and she found a woman's shoe. At this point, she called the police who came and found Peg lying away from the sign. The police found Peg's uncle and had him confirm that it was in fact Peg. In Peg's purse, they supposedly found a note that said, I am afraid. I am a coward. I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of pain. P.E. A letter arrived at Peg's house about a week after she had passed away from the studio offering her a movie role about a woman who committed suicide. Her family was upset, according to her brother, that the studio didn't call them instead. Who knows? She might have been saved. Hauntings. Okay, just before we get into this part of it, I'm sorry that I'm not continuing doing my makeup. I got it done really fast today. Apparently I was motivated. <laughs> so Peg has been seen around the sign for the last 90 years. There have been many reports of sightings and she is sometimes known as the woman in white. In 2013, a woman named Megan Santos was jogging along the trail, which she had done many times. And I guess she like began sneezing like crazy. And she said that there was an overwhelming scent of gardenias all around. So I guess gardenias were Peg's favorite scent. And this is actually a common trend with sightings of Peg is that the scent of gardenias was around. Megan said she had a, quote, weird feeling, end quote. Then she saw a blonde woman who, quote, seemed to be like walking on air, end quote. And she ran in the opposite direction. I don't blame her. I would too. In 1990, a couple were walking their dog on the Beechwood Trail. They saw a woman wearing clothes from the 1930s, and their dog was whining and crying behind them. In 1988, four friends 
uh, went to the sign after a Dodgers game. They climbed the fences and went to touch the sign, and they were able to. But one of the friends fell down away from his friends. And when he was on his way back, he saw a woman in 1930s dress and a veil, and she was coming towards them. She had no issues walking over the rough terrain she made no sound the friends ran down the hill and left her trailing behind them park ranger john arbogast has said that he has seen peg quite a few times john says she quote appears most on foggy late nights and leaves behind the scent of gardenias End quote. and that friends is the sad story of peg and twistle and the Hollywood sign. Do you think Peg is the woman in white? Let me know down below what you think. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out my Tuesday uploads as well. Always come see me for Spooky Story Saturdays. And I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye!